Hey everyone, Miss B. Hanley back again, and we're talking about more figures of speech and figurative language. But first, a quick recap of figurative language. Are ways of communicating ideas that have complex meanings. Figurative language are often literary devices that fall into one of five categories. The first is understatement or emphasis. The second is relationships or resemblance. The third is figures of sound. The fourth is errors. And the last is verbal games. Today, I wanna to talk about personification. Personification is the use of human traits applied to a non-human character or being. Writers will often use personification to describe a deeper idea. And once again, personification falls under the umbrella of relationships or resemblance to show a more deeper idea involved in a person's character or in a situation. For example, the wind whistled through the trees and shook the window. Wind does not have lips to whistle or hands to shake something. So I'm giving human traits to the wind to show how violent it is outside. You can also have something called reverse personification. Reverse personification sounds exactly like what it is. It is giving non-human traits or characteristics to a human being or character. Reverse personification can come in two forms, living and non-living. A living example of reverse personification would be the man stood as a tall as a tree. Now, you might think this is a simile. It is. It is using as in it to compare two things. But I am also attributing a non-human characteristic that is living to a human being. The tree is a living thing, and I'm attributing it to a human being. Reverse personification can also take the form of something non-living. For example, she fell to the ground like a sack of potatoes. A sack of potatoes is a non-living thing and non-human that I am attributing to a human character. This might sound like a simile as well. I'm using like to compare two things, but it's also reverse personification because I'm giving a non-living, non-human characteristic to a human being. Personification can often be used in literature to help more deeply describe or paint a picture for the reader. Oftentimes, figurative language is used to help the reader understand a concept more deeply or more fully. I hope this helped you better understand personification and reverse personification. I hope you have a fabulous day and I will see you in class.